What's up guys, Rogue9 here. There has been a lot of talk in the Rainbow Six community recently about allowing the BOSG.12.2 double barreled shotgun to attach a magnified scope such as the ACOG or the new scope that was introduced on Gridlock's M249. You may have seen concept art images such as this one floating around on Twitter, and there have even been video appeals from Blitz and random scientists imploring the developers to add this option into the game. If you haven't seen any of these videos by the way, I would recommend swinging by Bikini Body's Twitter and checking them out. So with such high caliber personalities throwing their weight behind this appeal, there definitely seems to be a lot of interest in adding a magnified scope to this shotgun. But what do the in-game stats say? Would adding magnification to this weapon create an overpowered monster of a gun that would break the game? How about we take a closer look and go and find out? In order to assess the impact of adding a scope to the BOSG, we will look at the following topics. First up, I want to discuss the general risks that come with adding scopes to weapons in Rainbow Six Siege. Then we need to consider any rules that the developers have that would prohibit this attachment before diving into the stats and characteristics of the gun to see if a scope would have any negative impact. And last but not least, I think it would also be worth comparing the gun to its closest competitors before finally deciding on whether or not a scoped BOSG is justified. There has definitely been a trend of removing ACOG access to several weapons in the game over time. I mean, think back to the early days of Siege when you used to be able to attach an ACOG to the SMG-11, which back then led to this gun being nicknamed the Pocket Sniper. It was marginally ridiculous and as much as you could have a lot of fun headshotting opponents from the other side of the map with a scoped secondary, it was definitely not an awful lot of fun when it happened to you. In line with this reduction of ACOG access, we also saw the attachment removed from all 2 and 3 speed defenders. The design philosophy for a while now has been that only 1 speed anchors should have access to magnified optics on defense because there was a huge trend back in the day for 1 speed defenders such as Jaeger to rush away from the objective right at the beginning of the prep phase without placing any gadgets or reinforcing walls just so that they could get to unexpected windows or doors for spawn peaks and early kills. And it is undeniable that having a magnified optic is very helpful in achieving that. Now, if this rule was still set in stone, then the idea of a boss G ACOG combo is pretty much done and dusted. Vigil is a 3 speed defender and on top of that his gadget is built for leaving the objective and roaming the map, so the rule of only having ACOGs on 1 speed defenders would definitely apply here. Here's the thing though, with the release of Operation Ember Rise, Goyo joined Team Rainbow and of course he is a 2 speed defender who has access to the TCSG-12 slug shotgun that can attach an ACOG. The rule around ACOGs for 1 speed defenders only has definitely become a little more flexible so in theory there is nothing that would strictly block the BOSG from getting a scope. That's consideration number one out of the way, the rule that would have blocked boss G ACOG from coming into the game is no longer being strictly enforced, one hurdle down, a few more to go. And there is still of course the question of whether or not a scope on a roam focused 3 speed defender is a risk to the integrity of the game, especially when it comes down to spawn peaks and early kills. To assess that, let's remind ourselves of some of the key characteristics of the BOSG and then maybe let's compare those to the closest competitors that already have access to magnified scopes. The Boss G is a very unique weapon in Rainbow Six Siege. Back when it was first launched, I was honestly not sure about how it would end up impacting the game. Would it become known as a skill cannon that can allow top tier players to do really well, or would it just be a meme? Well, now that the gun has been in the game for almost two years, I think it's safe to say that the answer to this question is that it is a meme rather than the high risk, high reward gun that it could have turned out to be at first glance. As a double barreled shotgun, it of course only has a capacity of two shots, and even though you can chain those together with a significant fire rate, the recoil has always been the limiting factor here. Even at relatively close ranges, firing off two shots in quick succession will pretty much guarantee that the second shot will sail clean over the head of any opponent you're targeting, so realistically, you will only ever be able to fire one shot at a time, and for that reason, it makes perfect sense that the boss G has a baseline damage of 125 points. If we take damage drop off into account, this means that the gun is capable of one shotting 3 speed opponents at distances up to 15 meters, while for 2 speeds that distance is 12 meters, and for 1 speeds it is 10 meters. 
If you throw some Rook armor into the mix, then three speeds will become one speeds, while two and one speeds will now need two shots at all ranges. And those stats are actually quite important already because, as we can see, the boss G has never actually been a great weapon for spawn peeking. The one hit kill capability has a very limited range. 10 to 12 meters is nothing at all really and even 15 meters is not enough for a proper spawn peek. If you want a guaranteed kill with the boss G, you're going to have to go for a headshot and that's not that easy when you only have two shots to pull it off. Yes, an ACOG would help land those long range shots and while 64, 72 and 80 points of minimum damage to the body, depending on your target's armor rating, will still sting a lot, I would argue that an easily controllable 30 round full auto SMG has a much better chance of landing that crucial headshot or even spraying down the opponent with multiple hits compared to what a two shot slug gun with high recoil can deliver. So that's concern number two checked off the list. The boss G is ideally suited for relatively close ranges where the one shot capability comes into play and it is not really suited as a long range peaking weapon. Now let's round out our thought process by comparing the gun to its closest competitors. Back when the Boss G was added to the game, I compared it to Glaz's OTSO3 since that back then was the closest there was in terms of a high damage weapon. And so why not start off with the DMR class as a whole? Because of their very nature as semi-auto marksman rifles, these guns all have access to ACOGs and while their damage is definitely a good chunk lower than that of the Boss G, they are still comparable to a degree. Close range damage is much lower of course, ranging from 60 for Dockerby's Mark 14 EBR to 69 for Buck's Cammers and Lion and Twitch's 417. And then of course there's also Glaz's OTSO3 at 71. Yes, those numbers are significantly lower than 125, but the close range damage is not really all that relevant to our discussion since we're talking about magnified optics and therefore the long range threat of each gun. The fact is that the damage drop off for these DMRs doesn't even start until 25 meters and the boss G already bottoms out at around 19 or 20 meters and if we look at these distances then the difference in damage is really only 10 to 20 points or so. Not all that much different. And if you then take into consideration the much lower recoil of the DMRs and the general capacity of 21 bullets versus just two, then you would have to conclude that even with a magnified optic, the boss G is still vastly inferior to all of the different options in the DMR class. But of course, an even better comparison to the BOSG is the TCSG-12. This is also a slug shotgun and it is also available to defenders, but instead of just two shots and crazy recoil, this semi-auto weapon gets 11 shots in total and is far easier to control. To balance this out, the gun has lower damage ranging from 84 down to 40 at 21 meters or more. And of course, the TCSG gets an ACOG. When considering the threat of spawn peaks or long range engagements, the TCSG is always going to be the greater threat because at these ranges, both guns will require multiple hits, but while the TCSG is set up to be able to deliver repeated hits, the boss G really isn't. So not only are there no real arguments against adding a magnified optic to the boss G, I would say that the comparison to all of the other non-auto weapons in the game actually makes an argument for giving the boss G an optic as well. All of the DMRs, the TCSG and even the 44 mag pistol already have access to high power optics and they are arguably far more effective weapons at the ranges at which an optic would add any benefit. And apart from all of the disadvantages we've already discussed, one huge aspect that I noticed while playing with the weapon over the last few days was that it is pretty much the only gun that really doesn't allow you to pre-fire. Pre-firing when peeking is an incredibly valuable tactic in Rainbow Six Siege and even though full auto weapons are best suited to this tactic, all of the semi-auto competitors to the boss G we discussed earlier can still pre-fire quite well due to their manageable recoil and reasonable ammo capacity. The boss G on the other hand will never ever be able to pre-fire in any way shape or form and that makes peeking a known enemy infinitely more risky than it would be with any other gun. The boss G is and always will be a meme weapon. I've hardly ever used the gun and personally I could not care less one way or another if it gets access to some magnification. But having considered all of the different aspects of this topic that I can think of, I would say that giving the gun a proper optic will most likely not do any harm and considering that there are already far more effective competitors in the game and that those guns all have access to one optic or another, I think it only makes sense to show the boss G a little love. But hey, 
That's just my opinion. Are there any important considerations you think I missed out? Let me know in the comments section below. And why not go ahead and vote in the poll in the top right hand corner now? Would you like to see the Boss G ACOG combo become a thing in Rainbow Six Siege? Yay or nay? You decide. Thank you everyone for watching and I also want to give a special thank you to those of you who have chosen to support the channel via the memberships feature. Kmax1255, Kenneth Brady and especially IB Reckon and Overseer Minty. Thank you so much for your long running support. Ever since I've been streaming on Twitch instead of YouTube, I don't ever really get to shout you guys out for the kind support that you've been providing for up to almost a year and a half now. You guys are awesome, thank you. And with that, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will We'll see you in the next episode.